Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour Finals Day 5. The first four games in the rapid time control ended with the draws. Uh, so that means uh, we had to see the two blitz games and if they are not decisive, then we're gonna see Armageddon game. And I would like to show you today the game between Magnus Carlsen, who's gonna play as black, and Hikaru Nakamura, who's gonna play as white. Uh, and this is the first blitz game. And it's pretty interesting for a very specific reason because uh, Hikaru opened with e4 and Magnus didn't go for e5, didn't go for Sicilian c5, but he played knight f6. Boom, Aliyehin defends. And now Hikaru said in the interview that he was quite shocked here. Uh, of, of course, he knows how to play it, he knows some principles, uh, but both of the players don't know it, you know, um, deep. Uh, we have e5, knight d5, d4, uh, and now d6. We have c4 kicking the knight, knight b6, and now f4. So Hikaru saying that, uh, okay, Magnus, you play the Aliehin. Uh, I am surprised. However, I go, uh, you know, for the most sharps uh, four pawns attack, and uh, let's see how you're gonna do. We have d takes on e5, f takes on e5, and here I will just show you. Uh, the main idea here, knight c6 with the pressure on d4 is the main idea here. And after bishop e3 defending, um, only then bishop f5. So this is the main line. And after knight c3, e6, uh, closing this diagonal, opening this diagonal, um, and the game can continue. One important thing, bishop d3 cannot be played. Bishop d3 cannot be played because this is well-known trap, okay? Um, this pawn, of course, is pinned, so um, black just, you know, won the, the pawn and uh, probably the game. So what white uh, can do is play with the bishop d3, you know, uh, somewhere along the, the lines, if there is no knight c6 on the, on the board. Uh, bishop f5, so Magnus didn't go for knight c6. This is knight c6, not this one. Um, and now we have knight c3 by Hikaru Nakamura. e6, pretty standard. Knight f3. And this variation also was, was played, you know, at least 100 times. So it's well known. However, it's not the, the most precise way of playing. Uh, bishop b4 by Magnus Carlsen. And now what Hikaru should go actually for is bishop d3. Uh, and Magnus would have to react somehow with, the, with this bishop. If he takes, Hikaru has a really uh, comfortable game uh, with all the center and uh, black are in actually in some troubles here. Uh, Hikaru in the interview said that queen b3, this, this he was considering this, this move, it's also okay, um, but, but not the best in the position. Uh, but Hikaru in the game played bishop e2, so a more silent move, he doesn't challenge the, the bishop on, um, on f5, and it's, you know, this bishop can retreat to g6, and it's gonna be very, very strong defending piece, if black, of course, um, gonna play the, the short castle. We have c5 by Magnus Carlsen, so now uh, attacking the center, uh, we have a3 kicking the bishop, and now bishop takes on c3, b takes on c3, and now white has this quite weak pawns, which, you know, it's they are very easy uh, targets. So Hikaru, but this is, you know, blitz game. So it's also if black goes for these pawns, uh, then white can have time to actually mount some attack on the king side. Uh, we have knight c6, so uh, preparing, of course, getting the, the pawns on, on c4. Uh, and now castle by Hikaru, castle by Magnus, and bishop e3. So developing last piece. And now knight a5 as planned. Now the pawn on c4, of course, is attacked twice. So knight d2 defending it twice as well. And now simply bishop g6. So getting the, the bishop to, to his favorite place where he can defend the position of the king. And now we still are in the theory, couple of games. Um, and there are two ideas here. First idea is to play something like rook f4. And the idea is to create the Aliehin gun uh, against the Aliehin uh, defense on the f file. So, for example, rook c8, uh, and then queen f1, and after knight a4, going after the pawns, rook c1, just, you know, defend for a while, um, and after, let's say, queen e7, 
h4 uh, go for the attack uh, against this bishop with the pawn that's the one of the ideas c takes on d4 a bishop takes on d4 and after making uh, the space for the bishop uh, h5 bishop h7 and try some moves like you know uh, queen f3 uh, and uh, black would have to probably go back with the with the knights because this knight uh, can actually be very annoying um, attack on f7 and together with this Aliehin gun it can be quite you know um, dangerous for example rook f1 knight c6 and the game is really really complicated and rich in ideas uh, but white first should you know find some way of, of, of getting to d6 that would be the strongest uh, if not then you know find another ideas uh, Hikaru went for queen e1 and this indeed was played also the idea of course is to support the march of the pawn so this pawn could could march on um, h file uh, and Magnus said okay I don't care knight a4 and now I'm attacking your your pawn on c3 uh, what you gonna do and uh, Hikaru said knight f3 now I'm defending that uh, but now knight b2 attacking this pawn twice and saying okay uh, how you gonna defend this pawn so this is the problem in the Nimzo Indian defense however as you see in the Aliehin defense is also possible um, even the rook cannot go to b1 because this bishop is you know pretty annoying so semi open b file uh, cannot be counted as an asset for, um, for white so Hikaru found another way of continuing bishop g5 with the attack on the queen queen d7 and now queen h4 with the idea of bringing the bishop to e7 attack the rook and attack the pawn uh, also there are some ideas with bishop f6 and maybe maybe you know um, if if black decide to take then maybe try to um checkmate on g7 but but you know it's it's just probably in the dream so uh magnus see this one so he says okay if there is no pawn on c5 then you cannot attack it so we have c takes on d4 c takes on d4 and now magnus simply grabs the pawn and asking hikaru okay how do you continue the attack and do you have some ideas Hikaru went for queen g3 making a space for the for the pawn and now Magnus queen d5 trying to exchange the queens um, Hikaru went for rook a to e1 and the idea is like if Magnus goes for queen e4 and remember this is the blitz game so the players doesn't have much time 5 minutes and 3 seconds incrementation um, and uh, Magnus probably didn't want to calculate all the lines here he could go actually for the exchange the queens because after queen e4 queen e4 bishop e4 yes there is this tactic you know with the with the attack on the on the bishop however bishop can take on f3 uh, and white would probably win the pawn here back um, so that would be the position uh, which is pretty equal black maybe stands slightly better but it's you know nothing serious this pawn definitely is the weakness uh, these two pawns against you know one pawn on the queen side is also uh, quite good for black so black stands slightly better here but white should hold that but Magnus didn't want to calculate all of these attacks on the e4 square so he simply rook a to c8 so getting with the rook to the to the open file of course cannot be bad and now how to remove this obstacle because this defender of the position of the king is the real obstacle for white and it's very difficult to continue the attack one of the ideas would be knight h4 uh, and for example after knight a3 just you know eliminate that this way and after h takes on g6 bishop f3 kick the queen maybe bring the bishop to, to e4 on this diagonal uh, start the attack with the pawns uh, maybe bring the rooks here maybe the queen uh, behind and, and and maybe try this way that's one of the ways uh, but Hikaru tries with the with the pawn so we have h4 and Magnus uh, just simply blocks the pawn with the h5 move so the queen has to be moved we have queen g3 and now Magnus uh, grabs yet another pawn so he is you know with the two extra pawns they are connected past pawns very very dangerous uh, so Hikaru goes you know all in and uh, then he's gonna organize the attack on the king 
Bishop e7 doesn't really work. That looks like, you know, it's it's pretty dangerous, but knight c2 with the attack on the rook and, uh, and yeah, this, this would be, you know, just exchange of couple of pieces and uh, that's, of course, nothing good for white. This is why Hikaru played bishop f6 and now uh, can black take this bishop or cannot? Uh, actually, Magnus could go for that. Uh, it looks like pretty scary, especially in the blitz that, you know, the queen could go to f4 and that's a uh, very, very strong uh, idea. You know, checkmate is always very strong idea. Uh, but what black could play is simply rook c3, uh, controlling e3, which is pretty important. And now this would not work because after queen e4, uh, the queen always can come to e3 with check with the attack on the queen so that's of course gonna be still better for black as black still gonna have you know disconnected past pawns in the end game so after bishop f6 uh, magnus didn't take the bishop but he played knight c2 saying okay i'm gonna win the exchange what are you gonna do uh, and here hikaru went for bishop d3 very interesting move because now it's a uh, it's a pretty tricky uh, take the bishop or not of course you cannot take because there is the checkmate on g7 so what to play next is there any trap here or not magnus told okay there is no trap so uh, knight on e1 and hikaru immediately without even thinking uh just play rook to e1 he burst quite some time here uh he got the one minute on his clock magnus had um, a slightly more however in this position magnus started to think uh, very very badly because this attack is a uh, is a very very dangerous attack so uh, Magnus at the end, he could go for some, for example, rook c7. The point is that if the bishop takes on, on g6 and, you know, it's taken, uh, there are always some ideas with the, with the queen g6 and there are some mating ideas on g7. The knight can join the party and it's very, very dangerous. Uh, but Magnus played queen d7. Uh, and he has only 30 seconds on the clock. Uh, D5 by Hikaru Nakamura. So he tries to, you know, make the attack even stronger. So once, he, for example, he takes the bishop uh, and the queen, this pawn, you know, can march, maybe can take um, the, the pawn on E6 uh, up to the position what just happened. Uh, and it looks like very, very dangerous, especially taking this bishop. But let's see what black can play. The queen can come to a4 with the idea of blocking the attack of the queen. So after exchanging, that's 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 possible. One of the options. Another option is rook c4. And this is even stronger, uh, giving back the exchange. And now if white decide to take, then of course um, it's all gone. All the attack is gone. So bishop c4, knight c4. And, and now there is nothing more. D takes on e6, queen e6. Uh, and then bishop is under attack, so bishop g5, a5, and this pawn's gonna, of course, win the game. Uh, and if bishop g6, then we have this rook g4, or, you know, the, the queen g4 was also possible. This is a little bit more tricky. Uh, because the queen has to be moved somewhere, cannot be exchanged for the queen. Uh, so bishop h7, and after king h7, uh, knight with check can make a space uh, for the queen and after king g8 queen d3 there is the the mating idea here so of course uh black would have to give back the exchange however again this is still winning for black three extra passed pawns should be enough of course to win so uh rook c4 was possible the strongest move in the position but believe me or not magnus carlsen actually according to the stockfish blundered uh, and here uh, hikaru had a really nice chance to to continue uh, so feel free to pause the video and find the very strong attack for hikaru nakamura while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So, what white has to do is simply take the, the bishop on g6. And now after f takes on g6, queen g6, there is queen f7. And the move we have to find uh, after queen g5 and let's say e takes on d5, 
this knight gonna go to knight d4 knight d4 with the idea of you know knight e6 with the attack on the rook with the attack on the pawn or maybe this way this way is also possible and you see a lot of ideas here very very dangerous so king h7 and pinning the and pinning the pawn for now uh, and also playing against for example this idea uh, so knight e6 is still on the board with this attack of course the the knight cannot be taken because of the checkmate so uh g takes on f6 also doesn't work because knight f8 and after queen f8 we have e takes on f6 with the very strong attack here and here rook c7 the the rook can be blocked however queen h5 and now what you're gonna play next uh king g8 queen g6 and your position is is terrible rook gonna come to to e8 and uh, and even if you play something like rook g7 it's it just doesn't change anything the queen has to you know move wherever and uh, and of course this is completely winning for for white so uh, g takes on f6 is not possible in this position rook g8 is the only option and now queen f5 with check queen g6 now black has to be very very careful all other moves you know are losing uh, immediately so knight g5 and now of course the king cannot go to h8 because the the queen is loose so king h6 and it looks already very very scary knight f7 king h7 but that probably this is the worst case scenario where uh, white would actually get the threefold repetition and a draw but as you see there are a lot of lines winning for for white so this attack was possible by hikaru nakamura uh, and you know with the 30 or 20 seconds uh, on the clock magnus carlsen would have to find you know the best moves just to a draw so uh, that was idea congratulations if you found it however Hikaru Nakamura had less time than you uh, he couldn't pause the the the, the game uh, and he played rook e3 which is still very tricky because now if black ignores that and play something like I, I don't know let's say b5 then bishop g6 is devastating rook e3 of course cannot be played because after bishop h7 we're gonna have a checkmate so that's not even possible so probably rook c1 and after king h2 um, f takes on g6 we already know that variation queen f7 uh, queen g5 and then knight d4 with this powerful attack um, you know with the knight so uh, we know that already that is very very dangerous uh, and finally if f takes on g6 and then again rook c3 uh, winning back the material here and after g takes on f6 queen g6 we check queen g7 now queen h5 white can actually uh, grab a couple of pawns and now black has a really difficult position e takes on d5 let's say um, e takes on f6 now the queen can grab the pawn these pawns are are pretty vulnerable uh, also the the knight doesn't have any protection the king is is in open for now has the protection of the heavy pieces but if the queen want to support the the knight it's you know the the, the king gonna be in the losing position while the white king still has have, you know these two pawns to defend so uh it's it's quite tricky however magnus carlsen don't want to you know play for that tricks uh, and he simply says okay i give back the exchange so a uh, rook d3 now your bishop your only chance to attack my bishop is gone uh hikaru takes rook takes on d3 and now we have e takes on d5 uh, and now e6 attacking even further queen e6 um, and now the bishop is under attack so bishop d4 going after a7 pawn and now knight c6 defending and also attacking the bishop we have rook d2 and now queen g4 so magnus carlsen want to exchange as many pieces as possible start from the queens as he has you know four extra pawns in this game uh, queen f2 so hikaru nakamura doesn't agree of course uh, and now bishop e4 going after the the knight knight e5 with the attack on the on the queen but now uh, exchanging the knight so knight e5 bishop e5 and now rook c8 bringing the rook to the game king h2 uh, avoiding the check and now f6 kicking the bishop bishop d4 and now b6 blocking the 
the attack of the bishop. We have rook a2 going after the pawn on a2, uh, but now rook c2, rook c2, look at this. Attacking the queen, forcing to exchange the rooks. So we have rook c2, bishop c2, and if the queen takes um, on c2, then of course the, the queen takes on, on d4. For now, the, the bishop is defended. So Hikaru wants to win one of the pawns. So we have bishop f6, g takes on f6, and only now uh, queen c2. However, Magnus can win the pawn back. So queen h4, and of course, black has four extra pawn so still you know completely winning position uh, but you know both of the players uh, plays on their incrementation have seconds on the clocks uh, and now we have king g1 queen e1 and now imagine that these pawns are white so uh, just for information, if you don't know, uh, there is a trick, the drawing uh, possibilities if the king goes, you know, uh, g1, h2, doesn't have much choice and the queen can, of course, uh, also goes from e1 to h4 and that would be a draw. Uh, however, we have black pawn, so Magnus is not interested. This is why after king h2, we have queen e5 with check, king h1 and now king g7. So uh, Magnus doesn't want his king to be cut uh, for example with some moves like you know um, queen c7 he plays very very precise uh, queen c6 by Hikaru and now d4 so just you know pushing the pawn bring the bring the queen uh, push the pawn and win the game very simple plan we have queen b7 Hikaru wants to grab couple of pawns king h6 uh, queen a7 and now simply d3 uh, queen d7 going after the pawn, but now uh, queen e1 with check, king h2 and now d2. So uh, threatening the promotion in the next move, Hikaru goes for queen d8, the one of the last tricks. And now, of course, if promotion, that would be disaster, that would be a draw. Uh, of course, threefold repetition, so it's, it's not even possible. Uh, so this is why Magnus play queen h4 with check. We have king g1 and now queen f4, keeping an eye on the, on the f6 and also keeping an eye on d2. Uh, we have queen h8 with check, king g5, queen g8, and now king h4. So there are no more checks. Queen d5, now controlling d1, promotion square. Uh, but now we have queen e3 with check, king h2, um, and now queen e5. And queen e5 forcing to exchange the queens. However, Hikaru said, I don't want to exchange the queens, g3. Uh, we have queen g3, so he avoid the exchange. However, there are still four pawns on the board. So king h1 uh, and if white are on the move, then actually that would be a draw because the queen can take on h5 uh, and black would be forced to actually pick up the queen and that would be the stalemate. However, Magnus is on his move and he also uh, finished that in a very precise way. So queen e1 with check, king g2 and after king e2, Hikaru Nakamura resigned and he resigned because after king g1, of course, there is the promotion with the check uh, and this is completely winning uh, by black. So no more checks. This is why after King G2, uh, Hikaru Nakamura resigned. What a game. Aliehin defense and black won. So uh, this was pretty awesome. Hikaru tries to attack, really, you know, fighter. Um, and I would like to show you what happened next. So in the another Blitz game, Hikaru Nakamura played as black and he won. And then we had Armageddon. And believe me or not, but Magnus Carlsen chose to play as white in the Armageddon get on and he couldn't actually win that game Hikaru Nakamura won so uh, we have third match won by Hikaru Nakamura so three to two uh, and today we're gonna have another match maybe the last one and if Magnus Carlsen win so that would be super final of the grand final of Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour finals, if I can say this way. And of course, as always, if you like this video, press like. It's very important to support me with likes. If you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss any other videos on my channel, you know, uh, from this tournament and others, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.